kind of notice how you're praying because the minute you yeah, stop yeah, praying for yeah. your circumstances to change and you just start praying for your heart to change, wow. that's when everything's wow. going to start happening for you. Because when you pray for your circumstances to change, you get discouraged when they're not changing. But when you stop and you pray for your heart to change, understanding that that's the real change, like he will defeat the giant, it, he must fall. In those moments you realize that even though you're in the same circumstance, the same situation you've always been in, that's when you have peace that surpasses all understanding. And that's when you have this confidence that doesn't even make sense because that's when God comes and fights on your behalf. And I think a lot of people would look at you like often happens in life and say, man, she has got it all together, this girl but you've actually overcome quite a bit to be sitting on this stage with me tonight. Yeah, well, that's actually really, I'm glad you said that because I feel like some people think that like, you're gonna get to this point in life or this place or I don't know, a certain job may exclude you from having the problems that everybody deals with and that's just not true. And I think that's a trick of the enemy because he puts this like destination inside. It's like, oh, if you could just get there, then you would, you know, be free from this. Then you wouldn't fear, then you wouldn't be insecure, then you wouldn't have problems. And then you get there and you're like, wait, why do I still have problems? <laughs> why am I so afraid? Why am I so insecure? Because truly nobody's excluded from the ways of this world. We're all in it. But Obviously our hope is in Jesus and that's what makes the biggest difference. And I think for me, it was kind of that way. It's like being in this, it wasn't that any fear was gone. It wasn't any insecurity was gone. It almost felt like that doubled and then tripled and then got worse because of that idea that you're actually gonna get somewhere to free it instead of just recognizing that Jesus is actually gonna meet you where you're at and free you in the middle of Amazing. it. Amazing. And I think for me, it's ironic because the time of Dancing with the Stars, Honestly, we're getting real, real fast. That was like the hardest, um, that was probably the lowest part of my journey, especially with fear. I remember, um, and I really don't share this in detail that much, but to be completely honest, um, the night that they called me to be on the show, you would think you'd be like, woo, I'm going to dance with the stars. That is not what I looked like. I was like freaking out, not just like minor freak out, like major freak out. Like I remember I was driving in my car and I was going to Mary Kate, who was my sister-in-law now. She was my friend at the time. She was dating John Luke. She's still my friend, but we were just friends. And she had just started dating my brother. It was all weird. And I was like on my way to her house because I needed like my friends at this point. I was freaking out and I start driving. I mean, just start shaking, like just total fear, like invasion, start crying. I literally got to the point where I like threw up, which is disgusting, but that is like what fear can like, get. you can get to that point of fear where it's so real. It is like all over you and it literally just makes you just freak out. And I remember I got there and I was so embarrassed that I had been like at this place of so afraid that I was like, I'm not going in that house. I'm just gonna like circle it, U-turn, go back home. And I remember when I was in the driveway, I quickly got out and I was gonna go back home and my brother, John Luke, comes running out of the house because he had been waiting outside on the porch for me, just recognizing that I wasn't there yet. And he came and he starts knocking on my window and I'm like, nope, you're not getting in this car. Like, I'm not about to show you what I look like right now. And I was just so embarrassed. And he jumped on the top of my car. No joke, what a brother, right? He jumps on the top of my car and I just started driving around with him on the top of my car. I thought, I'm not opening this door. So for 30 minutes, not being dramatic at all, 30 minutes, I drive around the neighborhood with him at the top of my car. Every now and then I'll just hear a little knock. You gonna let me in? Nope, I keep driving. And eventually, of course, I get out of the car and he just sat with me and he just heard me out for like, um, hours and we talked and we prayed and we just talked about what this is gonna look like. And I think that that was such a great picture, a horrible picture, but a great picture of what fear can get you to the point of, where you're totally not yourself, you're totally freaking out, even when it's an amazing opportunity, an amazing moment that God's literally placed in front of you, but the enemy somehow sneaked in and like whispered these things of lies and why you should be afraid or why you shouldn't do it. And then you get afraid and then you're embarrassed that you're afraid, so then you hide and you like make sure nobody in your life can actually see what you're going through. And the minute I opened that car door and talked to him, it was like things began to really shift because he could see truth because fear will blind you into this weird spot. And he just began to like shine a light on truth. And 
At that time, my mom called me, and she said like the most crucial thing. She was talking about one of her friends who had called her and said, just in case any of y'all are de- dealing with fear, which don't you love how the Holy Spirit works? She's like, let me just fix this. He's like, just in case any of y'all are dealing with fear, I just want you to know you have nothing to be afraid of. Actually, they should be the ones afraid because of who God is inside of her that's going to go to Hollywood and do this thing. And it totally just flipped everything for me in that moment. Of course, didn't like automatically magically happen. It was a process and it was like continuing to like break through, break through, break through. For me, it wasn't one night, poof, I'm like good. It was literally this journey of walking out with God and time after time after time, every Monday night that show happened. It was just that confident trust of seeing God. Okay, you did it here, you're gonna do it again. You did it here, you're gonna do it again. And then recognizing and realizing that the place fear is, there fear is conquered. And so time and time again of being in that place, like David and Goliath, and then seeing that giant fall, you're like, I can do it again because my God was faithful then, he'll continue to be faithful. And that's the main thing that's going to break fear. To me, it just, it has to be faith. And people, I've had conversation with people all the time at my age, they're like, yeah, but what if you don't believe in God? And I'm like, well, honestly, I don't know how to speak to that because for me, for three years, I tried every coping mechanism you can do, mm. but not until yeah. I just chose yeah. faith did my amazing. fear leave. And you so- know, it's so amazing that uh, the Bible, uh, they, they've said this, but unless you're in that place, it doesn't mean as much, but 365 times in the Bible, it says, fear not. Mm-hmm. God knew that we were gonna fear. So for yeah. us to fear, it's not abnormal. Mm-hmm. It seems like it's normal for a human being to be afraid. God knew that about us. And so he's encouraging us time after time after time to fear not. And that's what we're talking about uh, on this program tonight. We're talking about what some say 50 million people in America are struggling with, and that's anxiety. And anxiety has its cousins, depression, fear, worry, doubt, dread. There's a whole army or a host of friends that come along with fear. But the root of it, I think, is our confidence and our trust in yeah. who God is. Yeah. And so how you said it's a process, and I'm glad you said that, mm-hmm. because some of you watching tonight, you know there, you already know there's not a simple answer. Yeah. There's not a one-size-fits-all Band-Aid for all depression, all anxiety. It's all different, and it comes in different forms at different times, but it's a process. Yep. And it was for me in my life, struggling with anxiety, it's a process for you. Talk about the process, the process. that yes. you went through. The process. Well, for me, really what shifted and what helped me so much in the process is when I read Psalms 46. And if you haven't read that in a while, I encourage you to go back and read it. Because when I read that, I realized something. It's that it's sometimes we think, I think maybe this is a 20 year old thinking, but a lot of young people think like, oh, well, to be fearless, that means that like, nothing scary is gonna happen, right? Like we're gonna be fearless and it's just gonna be okay and that's how we're supposed to live. But that's like not the promise and that's not true. It doesn't mean that God's promising that nothing's gonna be scary. It's that when those things happen, when that situation comes up, that we have the ability and the authority in Christ Jesus that we get to be still and just know that he's God and that he's got it. And in Psalms 46, it talks about even when the oceans roar and foam, even when the mountains crumble into the heart of the sea, even when the nations are in chaos and in uproar, So this is stuff that we all see happen all the time. And this is the very things that make us afraid. In this Psalms 46, it talks about in those moments, you have to believe that there is a river who makes glad the sacred place of the Most High. He Mm. dwells in that place and it cannot be destroyed. It goes on and just talks about who God is in those moments. And then it says, and all you have to do is be still and know that he is God. And so that changed for me in the process because it wasn't that I was like, oh, nothing bad's going to happen. It was like I was prepared that even when I see that happen I'm like actually I'm gonna be still and know that you're God and I'm just gonna let you do this and when you see him fight for you time and time again that's what strengthens your confident trust in him and in uh, Psalms 91 that obviously is one that many people read over themselves and I heard my grandma read that over me a lot heard my mom speak that over me a lot but I was just um actually reading it back there because I read it most times before I speak. And I loved what it said. It was talking about how like, it goes through like how God is our refuge and our strength, you know, but then it goes through, if you believe 
that he is your refuge, yeah. then you need to know yeah. that he sends angels to encamp themselves around you, that no harm will come to your tent. And I love that because it's like, if you're believing that he's your refuge, then you also need to believe that this is what he's doing in that. That's what that means to be your refuge. So in the process, just continuing to speak those Psalms, speak the hymns that you've heard all your life, speak the truth of the word. And in Ephesians, Paul actually talks about speaking to each other in Psalms, hymns, and praises. Yeah. And I used to be like, that would be kind of awkward if I was sitting here to you and I was just like, yeah, but no, it's actually like exactly <laughs> what has helped me. Like, actually, whenever you see a fear, I'm like, I'm just going to start speaking Psalms. I'm just going to yeah. start memorizing them so I can speak it. And it's so cool because I've time and time again, this may sound crazy. I'll feel like fear coming because you can feel it. It's a, it's a presence. And I'll just start like declaring things. I'll start Psalms 91, Psalms 46, and it all of a sudden it's like peace just invades the room. And I'm like, boom, yeah, God is my so refuge amazing. and my strength. <laughs> it's so great. It's so great. It's so great. You know, we talk about um, worship being a weapon. Yeah. And even you referenced the story of David and Goliath, a story that everyone knows, everyone watching knows the story of David and Goliath, but it wasn't the rock and the sling ultimately. Yeah. Because that's not what David said. He said, you come against me with a sword and a spear and a javelin. But he didn't say, I'm coming with my shepherd's rod, and I got five rocks, and I'm a good aim, and I've killed a bunch of stuff in the past. He said, I come against you in the name yes. of the Lord God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. And he knew right there that worship was the weapon yeah. that he was going to use to so defeat good. that giant and to see God come through again like he had mm -hmm. in the past. If I can ask you maybe a more personal question, you talk about in the book, the book's called Live Fearless, um, and a, a call to purpose, uh, to power, passion, and purpose. And you talked in this book about being on Dancing with the Stars and it being a super low point for you. Mm -hmm. And you talked about beginning to struggle with actually an eating disorder, and there was a big set of challenges before you in your life. Um, that, that's real. And I think people would look at you and, and, and they would say, Sadie Robertson doesn't struggle with anything. Look at her, she's successful and amazing. And your life changed overnight when you were on Dancing with the Stars. You became a celebrity overnight. People know you everywhere now that you go because of that. But here you were in the pit, yeah. like face up against a real enemy. Yeah, absolutely. I think that for me, what I realized, and this is the danger of fear. There's a lot of dangers of fear, but one of them is that it's a snowball effect. It doesn't stop there. Like, I think when I became afraid, that also tagged on to being insecure because it takes your confidence and then you're not secure anymore in who you are and you're afraid of what people think about you. So then you try to like polish yourself to be this image that you think that they want to see, but that's really not who you are. Then you feel like a hypocrite. Who am I? And it just is a snowball. And I mean, that was my walk personally for you. I'm sure you can look back and tell your story, but. I remember actually what flipped that for me was an Uber driver randomly. I was in an Uber in San Francisco and this man was so down and he was so upset and he looked at me and he said, I wish I could be like you, but I can't. I wish I could be happy like you, but I can't. And I said, why? And he said, because I'm the emptiest person that you'll ever meet. And I was like, whoa. Um, and I just kind of asked him where that was coming from. And he said, well, I always thought if I had this much amount of money, then I would be happy. And then I would go back home and I'd be with my family. But I moved out here to San Francisco. Now I'm driving Uber, but I have the most money I've ever thought I would have, but I'm emptier than I've ever been. And I looked at him and I said, I can't even tell you how much I can relate to you right now. Because I thought if I got to this point in my life, then that would be it. Like, I always prayed that I would have this opportunity to speak to people about Jesus. I prayed that I would have this whatever. I would be secure in who I am. I'd be confident. And now I have every opportunity to have that, but yet I'm more fearful than I've ever been. I'm more insecure than I've ever wow. been. And we looked at each other, and in that moment, I was like, I think we've been going after the wrong thing. Wow. And um, it was kind of that moment for me that it began to shift because I realized it does not matter if you're driving an Uber, if you're on Dancing with the Stars, you can struggle with the exact same thing. You can be physically worlds apart, but spiritually in the same place, and the answer is the same for both of you. And that was a huge, huge turning point. Wow, you know, I've been, I relate to that so much. And um, I think a lot of, there are a lot of pastors watching this right now. And they're like, I know that story. And people look at a pastor and say, you're not gonna struggle with that. You'll never struggle with fear or depression or anxiety. You'd be surprised 
uh, how many people in all walks of life, we're talking about middle school kids, yeah. college students, CEOs, pastors, moms, who are wrestling right now with some form of darkness, depression, fear, anxiety. And uh, we've been carrying this message all year long, Goliath must fall. And we're talking about a lot of giants in this story, but primarily we're talking about fear. Your giant may not be fear. It may not be anxiety. It may be alcoholism or some other addiction or anger or rejection or a divorce that you've lived through or some loss in your life or comfort that's keeping you on the hillside when God wants you in the fight. It doesn't matter what the giant is. God doesn't want you to lose heart. And this is the plan of the enemy, right, Sadie? The first thing he wants to do is steal our hope. And he tells us, you'll never change. It's never going to be different. Yeah. It's always going to be this way. Did you ever bump up against that and your struggle as well? Oh, absolutely. And I think that sometimes it's like you get discouraged when it doesn't change. And that's another thing that the enemy will use is like that discouragement of like it happened again or like, oh, yeah. you're still facing it. And then you get to that point of feeling like defeated and you lose that hope. And yeah. that's essential. I think um, for me, I remember one time. I was so upset because I thought I had like, I was free of fear and I like, it happened again. Like I got so afraid and like I started getting so anxious about something. And I remember I immediately started praying, but I was praying this prayer that like God would fix the situation around me. And I remember like very clearly just God really speaking to my heart in this moment of like, kind of notice how you're praying because the minute you yeah, stop yeah. praying for your circumstances to change and you just start praying for your heart to change, wow. that's when everything's wow. going to start happening for you. Because when you pray for your circumstances to change, you get discouraged when they're not changing. But when you stop and you pray for your heart to change, understanding that that's the real change, like he will defeat yeah. the giant, it, he must fall. In those moments, you realize that even though you're in the same circumstance, the same situation you've always been in, that's when you have peace that's your is all understanding and that's when you have this confidence that doesn't even make sense because that's when God comes and fights on your behalf yes. and that yes. is yeah. and that's the message yeah. that is our message and that's the message that we're trying to actually get across tonight is that God is fighting yes, for you that's so, good. so right after David says don't let anyone lose heart he says you know this is going to go down this guy's going down yeah. today and they looked at David and they said how are you going to do that look at you you're 14 years old <laughs> And he says, when I was keeping my dad's sheep yeah. and a lion came, I turned, I struck that lion, I rescued that sheep from its mouth, I killed yeah. that lion and I've killed a bear. And you would think he's saying, so that's my resume mm -hmm. and that's why I'm gonna kill this giant. But the next line is the, lion, the line that I love. He says, and the same God mm -hmm. who gave me the power yeah. to kill the lion and the bear is yeah. gonna take down this Philistine oh, giant good. today. So yeah. he was saying, it's not David that's gonna take him down, yeah. it's that same power of God. And that's true for you today. Yes. God is fighting for you. And he's not looking for you to, you know, to, to hulk up and become a superhero. He's mm -hmm. looking for you to wake up today and look yeah. up and realize there's a giant slayer in your story today. Mm -hmm. And he is bigger than whatever you are facing. And Sadie and I are not minimizing the giants. I love that. We're not minimizing the danger of a giant. And for me, it was anxiety. And I tell people all the time, Sadie, that was eight years ago when I was in a pit for months out of commission. And here I am by the grace of God, and yeah. here you are by the grace of God. Look, here's two people by the grace of God who are saying today, Jesus is bigger than whatever you are facing in yeah. your life. He is bigger than the giant. But people say, well, what's it like for you now? And then I have to be honest. Mm -hmm. And I say, anxiety is still in my story. Yeah. It's not right here. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're sitting in Atlanta, Georgia right now. It's probably like on the outskirts of the city somewhere over there, <laughs> but I know what it is yeah. and I know how to fight it. Mm -hmm. And when it starts coming my way, I know it's not going to kill me and I know it's not going to take me out because I know yes. Jesus has already defeated it and so I can good. walk in what Jesus so has already done for me. So you're 20. I've said that three times already, but I think it's amazing that God has raised you up, Sadie, and you have a lot of, a lot of confidence and a lot of wisdom. And I love the way you boldly speak about Jesus everywhere you go. And if someone's watching right now that is 20 and they're in that place, maybe not even able to go to work, mm -hmm. uh, not able to go to school, 
not functioning in life, or maybe you're older than 20, but you're in that same space. What, what would you say, or how could you just encourage somebody watching right now that God is going to make a way for them? Yeah, absolutely. I think for me, it's funny um, that you said that. I think one of the biggest things that I would say to any 20-year-old or any really anybody is that you got to believe He's fighting for you. you got to believe He is for you. And in your weakness, He will be your strength. And it's actually kind of funny that you said, the two words, you said confidence and wisdom. Because honestly, like in high school, I'm like not very smart. Like school smart, not my thing, okay? Just being completely honest. Confidence was not my thing either. I was very insecure, very shy. My teachers like asked my mom if I even talked. That's not a joke. So like major, this was my weakness, but because of the grace of God, because God is so good. He is so strong in your weakest years and that's what you have to embrace because when you embrace that and just let him be him, it's so fun to get to walk around and like say things that you're like, how in the world, if it was not God, how could I possibly do that? Because it's so out of my nature, but it's just who he is. And when he's fighting for you, there's just no limits to what you can do. But I would encourage you by this because I actually was talking to a 20 year old um, recently and this moment was kind of a David and Goliath moment for him. Um, We were talking and it was so random. My friend had set this little conversation up because she said, you gotta talk to my friend. He's been a Christian all his life and he just recently just said that he's an atheist. He doesn't believe anymore. He's done with it. And she said, can you talk to him? And I was like, sure, (laughs) okay, yeah. And so I go and I sit with this guy, he's the same age as me, and I just kind of start talking to him, just really asking his story, what's what's his life about. And um, I noticed that he had a little bit of a different accent, but he was like the smartest guy I've ever met in my life. I'm not kidding, like using big words. And back to the whole high school thing, I was like, whoa. So it was like really cool, okay? So I was like, God, you're really gonna have to do a work in this. So I'm talking to him and he's so smart and all this stuff. and. Eventually, I just said, okay, so why not God? And he goes, well, you know, honestly, I'm I'm mad. He said, I'm mad at God. He said, because, you know, my whole life, I grew up and I was deaf. I couldn't hear at all. And I would just pray for this miracle to happen. I just thought if I could just hear, it would all be fine. He said, then I got my miracle and I had this surgery and I can hear now. But as soon as I began to speak, I noticed that I'm talking different than everybody else. And every single day because of that, I have to live with the insecurity of that, of what others think of me. I have to live in the fear of what others think of me. And I just can't do it anymore. And he said, I don't even want to do it anymore. And I'm just, I'm just done. And then I said, wow, you know, I, I did not see that coming. I didn't know that about your story. And I said, um, is that it? Is that the reason why? Because if you're just mad at God, do you really not believe in him? And he said, I mean, honestly, too, I just couldn't believe in a God that I can't see. How could I take belief in something I can't see? And why would I if I was going to be mad at him anyways? I said, okay. And I sat there, and immediately it just hit me. Because this whole time I've been sitting here talking to this guy, and I'm thinking, like, he's so smart. His words are clearly his strength, his way that he talks. And I said, isn't it interesting that I'm sitting here this whole time hearing how smart you are and thinking your words are your strength, and you you say that your speech is your weakness. Wow. Interesting fact. Then we kind of start talking about that, and then I say, And didn't you say that you're afraid every day of your life? He said, yeah. I said, do you know that the definition of fear is taking belief that something is a threat towards you? So you're taking belief in something you can't see every day. But what you're doing right now is choosing to, one, believe in something you can't see, but you're choosing fear. And in return, you're getting insecure and you're having to struggle with something that was actually always intended to be your strength, but now the enemy's put on that your weakness. But if you would just choose faith, your whole story changes. If you just choose to believe in God, the same thing that you cannot see, then you're all of a sudden confident in something that the enemy put on you as your weakness, but it's actually your weapon of strength. And it was just this moment that he was just like, (laughs) and I was actually kind of like, wow. And we sat there and I was like, isn't that something that the enemy will put something in your face and define to you as your weakness all your life? And you'll believe it and you'll sit in it and you'll be afraid. But the minute you just say, no, not my God, he is so much bigger and he will be my strength and my weakness. All of a sudden you get up and the very thing that's been holding you back all your life is now the very thing that you talk about, that you're confident about. Look at Live Fearless. That's the thing that held me in a pit for three years. Now it's the very 
thing I talk about to people all over the world. That is who our God is, and that's what he wants to do in your life. All you got to do is choose to believe in faith over believing in fear. Oh, great. And it just so great. my life.